for this conversation, we need to have a serious discussion about how we go forward on this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just building off the ranking member's question, do I own this phone? I mean, it sounds like when I buy it, I, my intention, my understanding was I buy, I pay you money, it's now mine. But it sounds like there's some lasting commitment where am, am I renting it from the company? Like why, why do I have some obligation back to you? If I go buy a pencil at Office Depot, they don't like come tell me how I can use my pencil or where I can take my pencil. I get to do whatever I want with it. Why is it different? Especially because my iPhone costs a little bit more than a pencil at Office Depot does. It, how is this relationship different than when I buy other products in the marketplace? This is an excellent question regarding personal property, because whether you are on the Democrat or the Republican side of the political spectrum, personal property rights is something that is very important to most people. Even those who believe that there should be less regulation are strongly for defending one's right to personal property. And the thing that is really noticeable here is how this is starting to become more like a rental or a lease than it is ownership. It's not one element by itself. It's the combination of every element. So this is a very complex device and we're not going to release any sort of schematic or board view or anything even to licensed repair shops and even our own authorized service providers. We're not going to sell chips or parts or tools to work on it. And if you go to the company that made the chip that we didn't make, you still can't buy it because that company is going to get told, don't sell chips to anybody but us. If you want to replace a screen or a battery, a message may pop up that says that it doesn't, it's, you know, it's not approved to work properly or certain functionality may not work because the serial number of the screen is not paired to the phone. And in the future, that may just mean that it doesn't even work at all. At what point point when you combine all these pieces of the puzzle, are we looking at the fact that this is not personal property anymore, this is just a lease? And at what point do we just bring it up without mixing pleasantries and just say, do I own this or do you? And what right do you have to say what I do with my product? Great job, Marco. Senator, clearly there are a lot of issues that we need to walk through. Um, what I will say is that that supercomputer that's in your pocket which you say is an iPhone, um, there's a warranty that goes along with that. And there's an authorized network of people that are that we have vetted who know how to uh, repair that phone. TechWise, this is Ira. Hi, I had a question about a problem I was having with my iPhone. Uh, do you do iPhone repair? Uh, to a point. What's up with it? Yeah, so I did something really, really, really stupid. It's an iPhone 6. It's probably out of warranty. It's like two years old. I, w I couldn't get my headphone plug out of it, so I kept pulling on it, and now the plug is stuck in the jack. Is that something that yeah, you'll be able to fix? No, unfortunately not. The headphone jack is basically hard soldered directly into the logic board. Okay, so you, so the hard you're saying that on the iPhone 6, the headphone jack is hard soldered. It's soldered directly on the motherboard. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's not on a separate cable that then connects to the motherboard? Mm, I don't believe so, no. All right, so what would be my option, let's say, if I if through you? Like, would I be able to get the phone replaced, or is there any option other than just buying another one? Uh, we would have to send it to Apple. You're looking at four to five days turnaround time and 299 Okay, so 299 and uh, mm -hmm. about three to four days. I have one more question. Uh, would they preserve the data, or should I back it up before having the phone swapped? You should definitely back it up. They don't guarantee that they can do anything as far as the data goes, and in many cases, they just clear the phone even if it doesn't seem like it's necessary. So, $299, you don't get to keep your data, it takes four to five days, but the best part of it all is that the authorized place says that the headphone jack is soldered directly to the motherboard. Now, let's try unauthorized repair. I shall back now, you. Hi, uh, do you fix iPhone 6s? Yes, we do. Okay, I did something really stupid with mine. I, uh, I, was, I t tugged too hard on my headphones, and now the plug is pretty much stuck in the headphone jack. Is there any way to fix or replace that? <coughs> There's a couple of ways we can do it. Either we can fish it out of there, which doesn't work every time, um, but we can definitely give that a shot first. That's the cheapest way. Okay. Worst case scenario, we could always swap out that, that port on the bottom and just give you a new port, and then that would work. So right. I always figure that the worst case scenario is most likely what's going to happen. So what would that cost if you yep. had to swap out the whole port? It's a, it's a 6, right? Yeah, it's an iPhone 6, not the 6S. 
Okay, so it is uh, 50 bucks plus tax. Okay, so $50. And uh, one last question. Uh, and I, I, I just called uh, one of the Apple authorized places, and they told me that the headphone jack is soldered directly onto the motherboard of the phone. Uh, but I always thought it was that's some little sure. separate piece that plugs in. So is it actually soldered? Yeah, that's I'm not just true. a little nervous. It's not, on a 6, that's not true. Okay, so the Apple authorized place uh, told me something yeah, that was true. So basically, so basically, the way that, like, even the Genius Bar, they just, kind of spread misinformation to make you use their services. Um, That's what I was figuring, yeah. Yeah, because we've fixed, I think, five charge ports at least, you know, this week. So it's not really, uh, it's pretty I common. All yeah. right, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. No problem. And do it under warranty so that you can still feel confident that what you're getting back is a phone that does not have TikTok put onto it. I will request a citation of a single customer experience where they went to an independent repair shop and after they got their phone back, it had TikTok on it. Doesn't raise some of the data privacy questions that I think this very committee is uh, wrestling with right now and things that I think that when you get that back, you should feel assured that you're not going to uh, have some kind of a compromise uh, in that particular device that's in your pocket. Uh, so. There are some, this, this I, I absolutely actually agree with Senator Rolfes and that we should be educating our future uh, students to create the cobblers of the future, which is digital technology. I happen to have an opportunity to be at the Consumer Electronics Show down in Las Vegas this year, and what's coming your way is really quite uh, uh, amazing. The technology coming your way is really, uh, uh. Amazing. Uh, just forget about that question that you asked, Senator. Just forget about that. You got to see this new technology that's coming out, CES, these new TVs. It's real. What does that have to do with the question that you were asked? And I think that we should all uh, be spending more time and educating more of our students in computer technology. The children and computer technology and education and the children. Let's help the children. What does this have to do with the question as to whether or not the property that you purchased from a company is owned or leased to you. This is really going out there in politics land where what he's doing is he's answering questions that he was not asked positively. And the answer he's given is great. There's a lot of great new technology out there. I agree. Teach the kids about the technology. I agree. What does this have to do with anything, Charlie Brown? Yeah, I think it ought to be done in the middle school so we can capture all the students early on. I think that we ought to be pushing that in this state. We're a leader in this state. For this conversation, we need to have a serious discussion about how we go forward on this. He's trying to have a conversation with you at this very moment, Charlie Brown, and you, like many other lobbyists, are not allowing it to happen. You're answering questions that you were never asked. If someone asks, what color is the sky, and you say blue or red, or brown. Even if you get the question wrong, you're having a conversation because they asked you a question and you're providing an answer that is within the same topic of the conversation. If someone says, what color is the sky, Lewis? And I respond by saying, I much prefer LG televisions to sharp televisions because of the image quality. That's not a conversation because I'm not answering the question that was asked in any reasonable way. When you start talking about educating the children and the cool technology at CES in response to a question about personal property and ownership, what you're doing there is you're answering questions that were never asked. And these may be lovely answers. I agree. Educate the children. I agree. The technology is great and it's evolving every single day, Charlie Brown. But that's not what you were asked. And you and every single one of these other lobbyists that likes to talk all about how we need to have more robust conversations, and that's definitely a topic for a more robust conversation, don't seem to understand what a conversation actually is. And perhaps that's their intention all along, to not have a conversation. Perhaps they feel like they're a little underqualified to be taking these positions and making arguments about issues they don't understand, and they feel overexposed because they're in public and people are listening to their arguments and people are asking real questions and not softball ones and he just wants to go back to arguing where he feels comfortable behind closed doors where there's no one to ask difficult questions and there's no one to refute fallacious information but those days are over welcome to the internet my friend and i know we're going to have that opportunity so, so let me just interrupt you there let's let's we need to wrap up this panel we need to move along this is taken but i do encourage i hope you can hear that there's a strong desire to have those stakeholder conversations a lot of support for this broad issue so if you guys could work on that with that we'll invite the next panel up